Erika says, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, the question is, uh, what was the special way of life and governance that made India prosperous before colonization? And would it be possible to live this way again today? We, what would be required and how could and everybody contribute to reach this way of life? Also, are there books about this? Uh, books uh, which address the specific issue? I'm not sure there are any. Uh, but let me address the main question, which is what was the special way of life and governance that made India prosperous before colonization? Is it possible to live this way again today? See, India is a river valley civilization. For 10,000 plus years, India has been in all in settlements in the Indian subcontinent from top to bottom, east to west, north to south, have been uh, around river valleys. So people talk about the Indus Valley civilization. That is just one phase of India's long history. We have, if, if you call that the Indus Valley civilization, there is a Kaveri Valley civilization also. There is a Tungabhadra Valley civilization. There is a Ganga Valley civilization. These are not separate civilizations. This is just different local manifestations of the overall Indian civilization. So the first thing is India has always been a river valley civilization. India has always been a dharmic culture which worships nature, which frowns upon any attempt to destroy nature or exploit nature. Yes, killing of animals, killing of forests, destroying forests, all that was is regarded as a, as a sin, right? Of course, you had warfare, you had meat eating at various times, but it was always done in a humane fashion. War, and, and the thing about this is this. See, India, as we know, it's it's now known that India was the nation with the highest GDP in human history. For, for the most part of human history. Um, the highest, according to Angus Madison, is one third of the entire world's GDP. Well, even those are actually, uh, there are certain oversimplifications in that. And before 0 AD, I think India's share of the world's GDP would have been higher than one half, maybe two thirds. That's how prosperous India was. It was so widespread and so extremely well developed. We see that. Even 5,000 years ago, you had better pl town planning in India than what we have today. So India was technologically very advanced. But what are the characteristics? Why did India become this way? Firstly, it's because even when you had warfare, the warfare never targeted civilians in civilian areas. The battles were always pitched. There would be a battlefield. Both sides would fight there, fight it out. And sometimes next to the battlefield, you would have farmers tilling their crops and no tilling their crops. And they would never be touched. Warfare did happen. There were a few bad kings here and there, but overall warfare had certain ethics, ethical rules. You never ever touch a civilian. You never destroy civilian property. And therefore, even though various kingdoms from would from time to time fight each other. They would have wars and they would be conquered by other kings. India's economy would never ever suffer. And much of the wealth was donated to temples. Temples were educational institutions. Kings would donate wealth. Kings, would sub, uh, kings and emperors would subsidize edu education. Education was free. Healthcare was free. And there was a great deal of prosperity. There was always surplus um, grains and all that to offset for El Nino kind of uh, events when you would have less rainfall from time to time, once in a while. So there were no famines in India. So the overall system was such that whether you had a single emperor who unified the whole subcontinent or you had multiple kings, the, the cultural aspect and the civilization aspect was the same. The way of life was the same. So when you had conflicts, you would never have destruction of public property. Civilians would never die. It did not matter to civilians who became the king things would stay the same. And the wealth of India was built in a variety of ways. First of all, you had natural resources. Yes. Uh, you, India was the first fully industrialized and urbanized civilization in the known uh, history of, of the world. Yeah. So there was this emphasis on learning, on science and technology, which of course uh, translates to military ma matters as well. And India had things that everybody else wanted. India was trading with the Chinese. India had the surplus grain production and all. Others would want that. In return, India would get gold. India had extensive trade with the Greeks. With the Greek, Greece is a small region, but Egypt was bigger. And Rome was prosperous 2,000 years ago. So we had ports in Western India, which would send spices, etc. to the Romans. And the Romans would get, send back gold to India in exchange for that. So because of this trade, the, India had this enormous trade surplus with the world. 
which is why India became over time, over the centuries, over the millennia, very prosperous. India did not have capitalism. Capitalism means extremely rapid growth. Capitalism is the endless pursuit of quarter upon quarter profits at, at the expense of everything else. And capitalism is what is destroying the environment today. The Western worldview is that the, the earth is a resource. Nature is a resource to be exploited. And that is causing the very rapid destruction of our environment, of the oceans, of the forests, of the land, everything, the soil. India saw nature and the earth as sacred. So whatever growth happened, happened slowly. It happened over centuries. And the environment was never, ever destroyed. So that was the special thing about India. The prosperity happened slowly. 10,000 years ago, there would not be so much gold and prosperity in India. I, I imagine. We don't know, right? We, because we have done no research from the historical and archaeological perspective from that time period. But we know that there, there, there are cities, there are the remains of cities that are under the Indian Ocean. In the let's say the Gulf of Khambat that date, date back to 10,000, 12,000 years before today. Properly well designed cities that date back 10, 12,000 years. So India was that advanced architecturally and from an engineering perspective, even 10, 12,000 years before today. So, so all the wealth that India had was acquired over centuries, over millennia. It was slow accrual of wealth. It, it is so if you try to recreate the same system today, it will take time to reach the same levels of prosperity. Maybe 200 years, maybe 500 years. But the rest of the world follows capitalism. So that's why India is right now, India has no option but to follow the same practices as the rest of the world is following. But that is not good for the environment. And that's that's the conundrum that we are facing today. Right? So that is what, what the uh, lifestyle was like. That's how the kind of governance we had. And that is what was destroyed by, first of all, the Turkic colonization and then the Western, European and British colonization of India. That entire lifestyle, everything was totally destroyed and all the wealth, wealth was transported out of India, first by the Turks and then by the British. They finished what the Turks started.